you, you want to take the pressure off your players so they can focus, but yet and still in today's world with social media and all the you know accounts that it always comes up. And you want to explain to your guys, okay, last year was last year. It doesn't matter. But we, we all know that they right. carry that burden. W- kind of walk me through a little bit of the process this year that you had to take to kind of keep those young men focused on the task right. at hand and not kind of looking in their rearview mirror about what happened last year. Yeah. Well, I want to jump always to the functionality of things when in reality we need to talk about you know how people feel and how they felt with that loss and how we're going to handle ourselves and how we're going to go about. Everybody wants a drastic change. And if we were in a bad position, then we should probably have a drastic change. But we were a number one seed. Uh, We won the league by three games. Now, when you come into this year, we just have to be better at what we do. Simple. But we also had to make some changes to get more skill on the court. Mm -hmm. We had to get more athleticism on the court. We had to get more quickness on the court. I think Lance Jones really helped with that. Uh, Trey Kaufman Wren gave us a, another guy that uh, can score on the block. Uh, Mason Gill was coming off the bench, was the best six man in our league, could really, really shoot the ball. But the guys that returned really worked on their game. And we went from an average three-point shooting team to the best three-point shooting team in the country. Now, our volume's not as high as everybody else, but you know we're also giving Zach Eady the right of first refusal. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, he's touching it. And, like, I always go recruiting and I always talk about, you know, I'll leave there and someone will say, well, what do you think? I'll say, well, that team needs to, you know, get a lecture on who their best player is. Our team doesn't need that lecture. We know who our best player is. We know where our bread's buttered. But we also know that we're going to do a lot more to get him the ball through Braden Smith's ball screen actions. And we do a lot through ball screens mm-hmm. because we want the guy guarding Zach to have to handle that, then have to handle that post D. And that causes more problems than anything. So we've put more skill out on the court so we can run more stuff and do more things because at the end of the day, you've got to score points. And even though it wasn't a high number other day, when you got guys out there that can shoot, now you're giving your best players more spacing. And when you got more spacing and you can rebound the basketball and you can score the basketball, get your defense set, not turn it over, you know, good things are going to happen. You know, outside of the Purdue faithful and you you know, kind of, kind of walk Zach through the progression over the years of becoming a much better player. Do you think the national scene doesn't really understand how dominant, how good Zach is, right. in, in what he brings to the table for your team? Yeah, you know the people that don't talk shit about him are the ones that have to play against him. <laughs> like, right. you know, those are the ones. Like he gets a lot of static because he's unique. Mm-hmm. I think anytime you're different. People don't want to give you, you know, the credit. You know, he's just different. You know, he's 740, he's 300, and he can move, and he's competitive, and he's unselfish. Just a lot of really good qualities, you know, about him. But he's getting better. You know, like this is his seventh year of organized basketball. You know, he's improving. He's getting better. He's learning the game. And, you know, he's cutting down the nets, and he doesn't need a ladder. You know, like, you know, like those pictures when he does something, you're just like, You'll be amazed by like his size, mm-hmm. but then once you see him play and you're around him, you're like, man, like this is a weapon here. Like we got to utilize this weapon as a coach. Like you got to do some things to put guys in position. But um, you know, he, he's just a tough cover. But I, I've seen people, you know, do do good things against him. I've seen people take things away from him, and where he's made improvements is now. You know, he's just an unselfish player and he's a passer. You know, when you have a great player, they're not going to reach the mountaintop unless they can pass the basketball. I don't care what position you're in. At some point, they're going to take you away. And whether that's with two people or three people or whatever, but, like, that's him. I think just because he never really, you know, had that limelight when he was a younger player, it's easy for him to pass if you take things away. And then you get people in rotations. And basketball is a beautiful game to play offensively when people are in rotations. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.